now you're in the business of, of worrying about money and investing people's money. You used to be in that other uh, business. Is there anything that people at home, investors, uh, should take away from, from what we saw with uh, Speaker McCarthy uh, being elected and, and having a slim majority now, uh, Republican majority in the House? Does it mean anything for investors? Sure, it means something. What's it mean? So it, what, what it means is that we, we have now seen the uh, reflection of the American voter desire to have a check and balance in terms of what was going on Barely. in the last two years. <laughs> Barely. But, but the, it, you know, it's the bottom line is there is now a Republican majority in the House. And that what that means is you won't see this continuing skyrocketing in spending. You won't see any discussion of any kind of tax raises. Uh, what you will see is, I think, an effort underway in the House to provide some oversight to what I believe is a hyper-regulatory mode against business on the part of this administration. But with what we saw, uh, with seeing how it works now to try to get a majority, um, what does it mean for, for doing anything? In ter what, let's say, could, how, could those 20 guys um, prevent us from raising the debt ceiling or shut down the government? So it, it, we've sort of like seen this movie before, right? Yeah. Because when um, but when it didn't I happen. was well, right, but when I was uh, uh, majority leader and Kevin was uh, the whip, you know, we were in a similar situation vis-a-vis -vis the Obama Biden administration. Mm -hmm. Now we had a much bigger majority. That that has to be said. He's got a much more difficult uh, 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 challenge this time. But in that process, we sat down and there was discussion. We had actually. Uh, meetings with Vice President Biden then for many, many months. Uh, and what happened in the end was a reduction in spending. It really, it did happen. Over the course of the next several years, there was almost a trillion dollars in additional savings compared to the budget baseline. So, I, listen, I think they get there, but it's going to be a very messy process. But we've seen this before, and I sort of think people in the markets understand that. You do... Uh we just talked about your political life. So the life you're in now, are, are you making any money, uh, <laughs> M&A-wise? Do you expect to? Do you, Listen, how's, uh, the know, Fed, how's the Fed doing, in your view, and what's it doing? And why, are these, why, why, why doesn't the market believe the Fed? It, it is, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to the discussion earlier today that you were having about the sort of disjointed fact that we've got now between markets and the Fed. And listen, from Molas's standpoint, I mean, certainly this year and the one we just came off of, no question, uh, deal volumes down. You see it in all the earnings reports today on the bulge brackets. Right. Um, and, you know, no question, it's, it's about high interest rates, challenging credit markets, inflation, and, and the geopolitical uncertainty that I know we'll all talk about next right. week. Um, I think it's all weighing on things. But what we're seeing at MOLIS is increased activity on the dialogue front because when you've got this kind of volatility, people want to sort of begin to rethink their competitive position. What is, where are the opportunities in, in a time like this? Are you this? seeing that more as a divestment situation because people yeah, are hurting? Or are you seeing that more as a situation of folks who feel good about their business and have some semblance of confidence that they should be buying stuff on the cheap or so something I look, else? I, I think there's both. I mean, I think certainly people are reevaluating sort of their competitive position given these macro elements. But I do think, you know, you've got some increased activity um, on, um, on the activism side, too, right now. And mm. that also can produce... Uh, m and it can, it can produce um, sales of uh, parts of companies, as we've been right. talking in many of the discussions this morning. So there's that, and I do think because of the situation in the public markets, there's a lot of dialogue on the part of the sponsor community about take privates. And, of course, you continue to have the challenges in the credit markets. Right. It gets back to the Fed. When is that certainty going to come back? So all this, I think, has produced a lot of robust dialogue, and I think our view at Mollis is we're going to see a real pent-up demand uh, for M and A going into 2023, given where we so are on, and what on, we came off of, on a relative basis, uh, or no, on an absolute basis, interest rates are still low. But on a relative basis, this has been jarring, and yeah. it's gone up really quickly. What kind of economy can we expect six months from now, or, or a year from now? Is the Fed done enough? They need to do more. So, I mean, look, I think, you know, given the fact we're a 70 percent consumer economy, I mean, you know, the discussion about inflation, I think, is, is very meaningful to go in and to, then to apply that to the prospects for business, right? And so, 
you know, it is about inflation. And Brian Deese was on talking about all the what he said was good news. But in absolute numbers, people are still facing significant costs. You know, services, going out to eat, going, I mean, it, th this is real for families. And we've got to get a handle on that. And, and I'm not sure that the Fed, in terms of trying to destroy demand, trying to get wages under control, is going to be the response to that. So we'll see. But again, Joe, to your point, this uncertainty is what is challenging, certainly on the deal side of things. It's, it's, it's challenging everywhere. Uh, and let's just hope, I think, back to your other question about D.C., let's just hope that that uncertainty doesn't add to the aggravation. Right.